Hi, I'm Scott Borders. Welcome to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. And today we're in downtown Cincinnati, Ohio, once again in what is known as the former Alms and Depke building. And joining me is an architect, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this building. It's Spencer Johnson. Spencer, glad to have you here. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'm going to let you just kind of take off with this because there's a lot of history involved with this building going way back several years. So why don't you take us through the chronology of uh, how this building has progressed throughout the years. Um, th this is a very interesting building in that it uh, has some cutting edge technology for its time, but this building started out as um, a dry goods merchant. Um, two brothers, Frederick and um, his brother uh, Alms, uh, and along with William uh, Depke, um, they decided that they wanted to expand their business and by, by 1855 they were very well established as one of the, the leading dry goods merchants in the entire area. So at that point in time they decided um, they were going to be a little different from the standard. Um, in front of the building on the south side is the um, where the Miami Erie Canal used to be. Um, and all of the central business operations in Cincinnati were all at that time south of the canal. Uh, Alms and Depke, the three of them decided they were going to break that trend and they were going to develop on this side, which is considered over the Rhine, which at that time was largely um, warehouses and first and second generation German residences. So they had, were ahead of their time in actually catering to the middle class and what you, I guess you'd say the lower middle class. So they decided to build their operation here. Um, so the, the major portions of this building were originally designed in uh, 1868. Um, they decided to team up with Samuel Hannaford um, of Hannaford and Proctor, a very, very prominent architectural firm here in Cincinnati. They also did Music Hall, they did 800 Broadway, uh, they did City Hall, very, very prominent structures here. Um, so the first portion of the building was constructed in 1874. Um, and their operation continued to boom. Um, so they did uh, successive additions after that. Um, the original building is all built of heavy load bearing masonry with uh, two and a half by 15 inch wood joists, a very <laughs> heavy, heavy duty wood structure. Sure. Uh, concrete, uh, not concrete, but cast iron columns, um, which would you would consider the older uh, established technology at the time. Uh, additions were done then in um, 1890 and 1891, um, which consist of the red brick and limestone um, um, kind of French second imperial sort of um, design standard of its time with the heavy mansard roofs, um, dormers, a uh, very unique look to itself, um, actually kind of has a checkerboard effect with the red brick and the okay. limestone, very distinctive looking. Uh, then there was an addition done in 1906 by the architect uh, Daniel Burnham. So the, the department store continued to flourish at the time as Over the Rhine continued to develop. Uh, but by 1955, Alms and Depke were out of business and uh, the building closed. Uh, there was some question about who the ownership of the building was at the time. And then um, whoever became the owner at that time decided to try to renovate the building to use for office space and at that time Hamilton County came in and began to rent the space for municipal courts. So the county continued to use the space for municipal courts um, until sometime in the 1990s when the county decided to buy the building and do a complete renovation. And at that time the entire building was gutted on the inside. Uh, all the abatement was done to remove any asbestos containing materials. So in 1995, the county moved in as uh, their own owner and the Jobs and Family Services moved in and had it's taken over the entire building. Uh, the building is um, just about 300,000 gross square feet of space. My, my experience with the building started in the, um, the late 1990s. Um, and I did a, as I mentioned earlier, an exterior renovation where we coated all the brick because the earlier portions of the building have very soft brick. And so we've been coating those to keep those lasting as long as we can. Kind of through the elements and everything. Correct. The coating also, there's some of the bricks tend to break or chip or whatever. We replace them as we can and keep it coated. 
Spencer, it's my understanding that uh, this area of Cincinnati is absolutely infiltrated with tunnels. And uh, we, we understand there used to be a subway system or it was once uh, trying to be constructing a subway system and various other usages. So tell me a little bit about how this building ties in with some of those tunnels in the area. Yeah, I neglected to mention that uh, this side of the canal used to be uh, first and second generation German um, residences, but there were also a lot of beer halls <laughs> and pubs, and there is a whole series of brick um, beer vaults that are underneath this area. Uh, there's some over where the convention center is, I mean the um, casino is located, mm -hmm. but also behind the building on the other side of Reading Road, which we call the alley, um, is now a park house garage, which is a six-story parking garage. But originally there used to be a warehouse there, and there used to be a series of tunnels that connected the Alms and Depke building to that merchandising warehouse. Um, all of these tunnels have been closed up other than one that's just partially still available, but the vaults are still down there. And yes, the, the canal, which was here first, the Miami Erie Canal, was at one time proposed to be um, abandoned and used as a subway system. Uh, the, Cincinnati, the city of Cincinnati proposed in the late 1800s to implement a subway. Uh, the subway had already been built in New York, it had already been built in Boston, so there was some precedent for doing it. So the city decided that they would build a subway, but unfortunately they didn't finance enough money. So they did construct 12 miles of the subway, and it does occur where the, the canal used to occur. So it, it goes from the AAA uh, office all the way down Central Parkway, and then stops. There's also uh, some of it that daylights out on I-75. So the canal was abandoned, the subway was built, and then covered over. Uh, the Alms and Depke building, because it had originally been built with the canal adjacent to it, had window openings uh, that bordered the canal. But when the infill happened, the street level now was higher than the canal uh -huh. used to be. So some of the windows had to be bricked sure. in and, and blocked in in order to adapt to the, uh, the, si the sidewalk. Um, the original building used to have an entry on the east side and the west side. What we consider the main entry today was not necessarily always the main entry. And actually the building somewhat fronted to the back side because it was dealing with the residences that lived on what would be the north side. Now obviously the main entry is from the south side of the building. And as a matter of fact, there's an orna ornate clock that's on the uh, southeast side of the building, used to be on the the northeast side. It was moved when the renovation was done. Thanks for watching another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. We're going to say goodbye to you from downtown Cincinnati, Ohio, and the former Alms and Depke building. This has been Spencer Johnson. It's been a pleasure. And remember, travel, travel slowly, slowly and stop often. Mm -hmm.